Just because more and more people in modern society are dismissing the concept of karma as nonsense doesn't make it any less powerful. There are 12 laws that govern karma throughout the universe, both good and bad. If you know these laws, they are like a wave you ride. But if you ignore them, they are like a current that constantly works against you and hinders all your efforts. It's up to you. Does knowing about the 12 laws of karma sound like what you've been looking for? Then let's start with the first law. Imagine getting into a heated argument with someone again, maybe at the office or at home. Out of anger, you say something hurtful. At that moment, getting the upper hand might feel good, but those negative words are like poisonous seeds you plant in the ground. And you know what happens? Those seeds grow, flourish, and quickly come back to you, often in the form of unexpected problems, misunderstandings, or a broken relationship. It may not happen immediately, but the law of cause and effect is infallible. At some point, the effect of your action will catch up with you. And now ask yourself, how often have you wondered why negative events suddenly entered your life? How often do we blame bad luck or coincidence? But what if it goes deeper? What if the negative energies you send out, whether through words, thoughts, or actions, find their way back into your life? This law challenges us to take responsibility for our actions. You can't avoid it, you can't hide from it. But if you understand how it works, you can use it to your advantage. Think of the law of cause and effect as a mirror. What you project into it comes back as a reflection. You smile at the mirror, the mirror smiles back. You throw hate into it, and hate is what you get back. The universe is programmed to reflect your energies, both positive and negative. Here lies the magic of this law. If you choose to send out positive energy, you will also receive positive energy in return. It's almost as if you're paving your own path in life, brick by brick, day by day. So if you are mindful of your actions, you begin to realize that you actually have much more control over your life than you might have believed. The decisions you make today influence your future. What you give is what you get. And if you want life to bring you good things, you should act with a clear intention to do good for others as well. But let's be honest, it's not always easy, is it? In our daily lives, things happen that upset us. We get stressed, annoyed, sometimes we're just tired. In such moments, it's hard to remember that every action has an effect. But that's exactly where the law comes in. It challenges us to pause, reflect, and make conscious choices. Because each of your decisions counts. And think of it this way, your life is like a big puzzle, and every action is a single piece. The more positive pieces you add, the clearer and more beautiful the picture becomes. But every negative piece distorts the overall picture, and sooner or later you'll have to fix it. That's the balance of the universe. It ensures that everything comes into balance eventually. How often have you been angry with someone and later realized that this anger did more harm to you than the person you were angry with? This is the perfect example of the law of cause and effect. Negative energy always comes back to the sender, sometimes even stronger. But if you show compassion and understanding instead, you send out these positive energies, and they come back to you, perhaps in the form of kindness, happiness, or an unexpected opportunity. The first law of karma is therefore not just a universal principle, it is an invitation to you to live more consciously. It asks you to pause and reflect on what you are sending out into the universe with each of your actions. Because these energies, these waves, always return to you. And if you act with intention, you can use these waves to create the life you desire. Now that we know the law of cause and effect, we can delve deeper into the subject. Next, we'll look at the second law of karma, the law of creation. This is about how we can consciously shape our reality by applying the principles of the universe in our everyday lives. Are you ready to dive deeper into the web of karma laws? Having understood the law of cause and effect, we now dive into the second important principle, the law of creation. If the first law shows us that every action has a consequence, the law of creation teaches us that we can actively shape those consequences. It's not about passively waiting to see what life brings us, it's about creating the life we want ourselves. The law of attraction reminds us that we are not mere spectators in our lives. We are the architects, the builders of our reality. Every thought, every decision and every action lays another brick in the foundation of our lives. So don't wait for things to fall into place, take control. Think of life as a work of art, the world gives you the brush, but you decide what will appear on the canvas. If you don't actively paint, the image will remain blurry and undefined. But when you consciously and intentionally put your desires on the canvas, you create something unique. Often, however, 
we see ourselves as passive recipients of life. How many times have you thought, if life will it, it will happen? This way of thinking only leads us to remain in the same position without moving forward. But the law of creation challenges you to take a different approach. Don't wait for circumstances to change, for the perfect opportunity to arrive, create those circumstances yourself. A great example of this is someone who dreams of a fulfilling career but doesn't actively seek to learn the necessary skills or take steps to make that dream a reality. Instead, they wait for the universe to provide them with that opportunity. The problem is that while the universe follows the laws of causality, it is our actions that influence that causality. If you don't create anything, what is the universe supposed to give back? So the law of creation and the law of cause and effect are closely linked. Every action you take, Every decision you make sets the causal chain of life in motion. This means that by consciously creating your reality, you are also actively shaping the consequences. So you not only plant seeds of change, but you also decide what fruits they will bear. It is as if you not only throw the stone into the water, but also determine how big the waves should be and in which direction they spread. The external world you experience is a mirror of your internal thoughts and beliefs. If you believe that life brings you nothing good, you will unconsciously act to confirm just that. But when you understand that you have the power to actively create life, your inner attitude will change, and the universe will respond. This interplay between cause, effect, and creation is the essence of how we can use the law of karma to our advantage. To make this more tangible, think of a gardener. She knows that the soil is fertile and that she can plant the seeds to reap a bountiful harvest. But if she doesn't actively till the soil and sow the seeds, nothing will grow, no matter how good the soil is. The same applies to the law of creation. You have the abilities and possibilities to shape your reality, but you have to make the conscious decision to use these abilities. This doesn't mean that everything will be perfect right away. Sometimes you plant seeds and it takes a while for them to grow. But be assured, every step you take towards your vision brings you closer to your goal. The laws of the universe are on your side as long as you are willing to take responsibility for your life. And that's exactly the point responsibility. You can't expect life to give you everything you want if you don't take responsibility for your own actions. The law of creation asks you to accept this responsibility and to actively shape it, instead of just consuming. Destiny is not random, it is the result of the conscious or unconscious actions we take. Another example that illustrates this connection between creation and cause and effect is an artist who wants to create a painting. The artist knows that the colors they choose and the strokes they use affect the end result. But if they sit down without painting, nothing will come of it. It's the same with your life. You are the artist, and the universe is your canvas. But you have to make the first stroke to form the picture you want to see. I'm happy for you that you have been with us on this journey so far. If this video has touched your heart or brought you new insights, it would be wonderful if you would really support us. You can become a channel member to do that. It's easy to do using the link in the description below this video. Then you can see all new videos before they are public for everyone else. If you choose to do so, thank you. After all, we are all here to grow and learn together, and your support is the light that illuminates our path. The magic of creation lies in the fact that you are not just passively waiting for life's reactions, but actively influencing them. It is up to you to use the law of cause and effect in such a way that it serves you, rather than blocking you. When you understand that you create your own life, you begin to see every moment as an opportunity to make the most of it. And that is the true power of the law of creation, it gives you the opportunity to go beyond passive expectations and take control of your destiny. You are not the victim of circumstances, but the creator of your own reality. With every thought, every word, every action. Having explored the law of cause and effect and the law of creation, we now turn to two further central principles, the law of humility and the law of growth. Both are closely interwoven, because before real growth can happen, we must first learn to look at ourselves with complete honesty. The law of humility shows us that true progress and change are only possible when we accept reality as it is. Often we are tempted to blame difficulties or failures on external circumstances. But to truly grow, we must take a step back and acknowledge the truth about ourselves. It is only when we see things as they really are, and not as we wish them to be, that we can begin to change our lives. You may ask yourself, what does this have to do with humility? Humility means recognizing that we don't know everything, can't control everything, and have made mistakes. And that's exactly where the transformation begins. Once we admit to ourselves that we are imperfect and still have room for growth in certain areas,
we open the door to change. It is this honest reflection on our strengths, but also on our weaknesses, that points us in the direction of improvement. A simple example, imagine you have a recurring conflict in your relationships. It would be easy to always blame the others. But the law of humility asks you to stop and ask yourself, what role do I play in this conflict? It could be that you yourself have unconscious behaviors or beliefs that contribute to the tension. Once you acknowledge this, you can begin to work on these aspects. Humility is therefore the key that allows you access to real change. Now we come to the law of growth. This principle is deeply connected to the law of humility, because true growth can only begin when we accept reality as it is. Growth always starts within ourselves. Before we change the outer world, we need to change ourselves. Any inner transformation is reflected in the outer world. This is the core of this law. We can only positively influence the world around us when we transform ourselves first. There is this widespread desire to change external circumstances, be it the workplace, relationships or society. Yet the law of growth reminds us that these changes do not come from outside. They always start within us. It's easy to put the responsibility for our happiness or circumstances on others. But growth means taking full responsibility for our own lives and taking the necessary steps to make the internal changes needed. Think of it this way, you may want certain people around you to change so that your life becomes easier or better. But the law of growth teaches us that true change begins with ourselves. As soon as we start working on our own attitudes, habits and thoughts, the way we experience the world will also change. You will notice that as your inner circumstances change, so do your external circumstances to your advantage. What does that mean in concrete terms? It means that all progress we make comes from within. If you cultivate inner peace, you will remain calm even in difficult situations. If you develop love and compassion, your relationships will become more harmonious. If you practice self-discipline, you will achieve your goals more easily. The law of growth, therefore, encourages us not to rely on external circumstances, but to take responsibility for our own progress. The interplay between the law of humility and the law of growth is crucial. Without humility, without admitting that we have weaknesses, make mistakes, and still have learning to do, no real growth can take place. You can't grow if you're not willing to be honest with yourself. Humility is the first step in transforming one's karma, in taking one's life to a new level. And as we grow, not only does our inner self change, but so does the outer world around us. It's a universal process, as soon as we find our inner balance, that balance is reflected in our environment. You'll find that challenges are easier to overcome, relationships improve, and overall you're happier and more balanced. That is the true power of these two laws. They challenge you to look inward to see the changes you desire on the outside. If you have the humility to recognize your weaknesses and the will to grow internally, you will experience a profound transformation, and that transformation will affect your entire life. So if you really want to change something in your life, Start with yourself. Accept with humility where you are on your journey and be willing to take the necessary steps for your personal growth. Because the universe is not waiting for you to be perfect. It responds to your willingness to change and grow, and that is precisely the key to positively influencing your karma. Having understood the laws of humility and growth, we now turn to two more powerful principles, the law of responsibility and the law of connection. These two laws reach deep into our everyday experience and remind us that our choices affect not only ourselves but also the world around us. First, let's take a look at the law of responsibility. It tells us that we are the sole creators of our reality and that everything that happens in our lives is directly linked to our own choices and actions. It may be tempting to blame external circumstances for our problems, our job, our environment, our society. But this law shows us that we, and only we, are fully responsible for what happens in our lives. Here comes the crucial point, it's not about blaming yourself, but about taking responsibility. Many people confuse these two concepts. Blaming means standing still, it blocks our ability to change anything. When we blame ourselves or others for our destiny, we give up control. Responsibility, on the other hand, means we have the power to change something. It is an invitation to take control of our lives, to take the reins and actively shape our reality. Imagine you are faced with a difficult decision. Perhaps you feel stuck in a particular area of your life, be it your job, your relationship, or your personal development. It would be easy to blame external circumstances. My boss is not giving me a chance. My partner doesn't understand me. The circumstances are too difficult. But when you recognize the law of responsibility, 
you begin to understand that you always have a choice. You can either wait and hope that things will improve on their own, or you can take responsibility and actively seek solutions. Responsibility is the key to change because it frees us from the role of the victim. When you start to see your own choices and actions as the cause of the results in your life, you realize that you also have the power to make new, more conscious choices. And this is precisely where the law of responsibility and the law of connection overlap. The law of connection teaches us that everything in the universe is intertwined. Every action, thought and decision we make has an effect, not just on ourselves, but on the entire fabric of the universe. We may believe that our actions are isolated, but in reality, each moment, each step is connected to the next, like the links in an endless chain. Let's make that more tangible. Imagine throwing a stone into a still lake. The ripples that result spread out in all directions, reaching places you can't immediately see. It's the same with your actions. The choices you make today have consequences that reach far beyond what you can imagine. You may not notice the effects immediately, but they are there, silently and invisibly, influencing the people and world around you. The invisible threads that connect everything in the universe mean that nothing you do goes without influence. A kind word, an unthinking action, or even a thought, they all release energies that spread further and further. And that is precisely why the law of responsibility is so important. You are not only responsible for your own life, but also for the world that you co-create with your actions and thoughts. Everything you do, everything you think, is part of a larger whole. You are a node in a complex network of connections that extend beyond space and time. Maybe you have experienced it, you made a small, seemingly insignificant decision, and yet it led to far-reaching consequences. A spontaneous conversation, an unexpected encounter, they may have changed your life or that of someone else forever. That is the law of connection in action. It reminds us that no action is isolated. Everything is part of a much larger cosmic web. Now that we have these two laws in mind, it becomes clear how closely they are linked. When we take responsibility for our lives, we automatically recognize our role in the bigger picture. We understand that our decisions not only determine our own destiny, but also influence the world around us. This insight brings us to an important realization. It is in our hands to make a positive change not only in our lives, but also in the world. The universe is waiting for us to recognize our responsibility and consciously deal with the connections that shape our actions. Each of us is a part of the whole, and what we do has an effect on that whole. When we consider these two laws together, we realize that we are not only responsible for our own happiness, but also for how we contribute to the good of the universe. Our thoughts, our decisions, our actions, they all have far-reaching significance. Taken together, the law of responsibility and the law of connection show us that we are actively involved in shaping our lives and that our actions are always part of a larger cosmic plan. We are not only responsible for our personal development, but also for the impact our lives have on the universe. By consciously living these laws, we can not only steer our own lives in a positive direction, but also the lives of the people around us and the world as a whole. If you feel that this video has been of value to you so far, I would be grateful if you would share that value with a donation through the super thanks button below the video, as much as you feel is right and fair. Every gesture of appreciation is a precious gift for me, and it is your donations that make all of this possible. In the next step of our journey through the universal laws of karma, we encounter two essential principles that influence our daily lives and our spiritual growth, the law of focus and the law of giving and hospitality. Both laws work hand in hand and help us not only to focus our energy on what really matters, but also to recognize that true fulfillment often comes from giving to others. Let's start with the law of focus. Imagine your mind as a laser beam, its power lies in its concentration. You can't think of two things at once, at least not effectively. Any attempt to focus on several things at the same time dilutes your energy and reduces your effectiveness. The law of focus asks us to consciously choose a direction and focus our energy on what we want to create in life. The power of this principle is evident in a simple everyday example. Imagine you have a goal, let's say you want to advance professionally. If you really focus on this goal, if you align yourself every day to improve your skills and seize opportunities, doors will open for you. But if you are also afraid of failure or constantly focusing on your weaknesses, then this negative energy will block your progress. The law of focus is clear. When you focus your attention on the positive, on what you really want to achieve, you will attract more positive things into your life. Your thoughts shape your reality. So if you focus on what brings you joy, success and fulfillment, the universe will give you more of it. But if your focus is on negativity, on problems or fears, 
then the universe will amplify those negative energies as well. It's like tuning in to a radio station. If you select the right frequency, you'll hear clear, pleasant music. However, if you remain on a frequency that is overlaid with interference, the reception will be unclear and distorted. Your focus is the frequency you choose, and what you receive is directly dependent on what you place your attention on. The law of focus reminds us, then, that we have the power to consciously direct our mental energy, and thus shape the quality of our reality. But how does this principle relate to the law of giving and hospitality? Quite simply, focusing on giving is one of the most powerful forms of conscious creation. The law of giving and hospitality states that what we receive in our lives is directly related to how much we are willing to give. When we are generous with our time, resources and energy, the universe opens the gates to positive karmic effects. But giving is not just about material generosity. It is about more than that. Kindness, love, attention. These are all forms of giving that are equally powerful. Every act of giving is an investment in the karmic balance of the universe. When you give with an open heart and pure intentions, you send out a wave of positive energy that will return to you sooner or later. Maybe not always in the way you expect, but always in a way that enriches your life. A simple example, imagine taking time to listen to a friend who is in trouble. You give not only your time, but also your attention and compassion. This act of giving may seem small, but the energy you send has a wide reach. You may receive support later when you need it most, or unexpected opportunities may arise in your life as a result of this positive energy. The universe honors all forms of giving, not just material ones. When you give a smile, lend an ear, or reach out to help someone in need, these are valuable acts that influence the karmic balance. The law of giving reminds us that our prosperity, whether material or spiritual, often depends on how much we are willing to share with others. Hospitality, which is also mentioned here, goes in the same direction. Hospitality is not only the physical opening of our homes to others, but also the opening of our hearts. It means making space for other people, standing by them in their time of need, without expecting anything in return. When you spend your energy helping others, you strengthen the connection to the laws of karma and lay the foundation for receiving abundance in your own life. The connection between the law of focus and the law of giving and hospitality lies in consciously aligning yourself with what you want to create in your life. When you focus on giving, you not only amplify the positive energy in your own life, but also in the world around you. This energy returns to you, often in the most unexpected moments and in the most amazing ways. In summary, these two laws show us that what we focus on and what we are willing to give are the keys to creating our reality. If you want to consciously shape your life, focus on what you want to create and give generously of yourself, in the form of love, attention and compassion. This way, you will feel the positive effects of these universal principles in your own life and in the world around you. Now we come to two more essential principles that profoundly influence our lives and our spiritual path, the law of change and the law of patience and reward. Both laws teach us that growth and transformation are not only inevitable, but also require time, perseverance and patience. Let's start with the law of change. This law explains that history repeats itself until we have learned the necessary lessons. Life repeatedly presents us with similar challenges, in different forms and moments. However, if we do not recognize the old patterns, the cycle of repetition will continue. But this is precisely where the power of change lies. It happens when we let go of the old ways and have the courage to make new choices. Many people feel stuck in their lives, experiencing the same problems over and over again, whether in relationships, at work or on a personal level. But this feeling of stagnation is only an illusion. Nothing in life is static. Everything that happens around us is in a constant state of flux. The problem is that we often cling to old patterns because they are familiar to us, even if they no longer serve us. The law of change asks us to break these patterns and open ourselves to new possibilities. Maybe you have experienced this too. You find yourself in a situation that feels unbearable, perhaps a difficult relationship or a burdensome job. Instead of leaving this situation or trying something new, you stay because the thought of change triggers fear. But that's the point. If you don't change, you'll remain trapped in negative karmic cycles. These cycles will repeat themselves until you learn the lessons life is trying to teach you. Only when you're ready to do something different will the doors to new possibilities and positive transformation open. Change is often scary, that's normal. But it's also the only way to move forward. When you see the same problems in your life over and over again, it's a sign that you're making the same choices and getting the same results. To break this cycle, 
you need courage and a willingness to act differently. When you do, the universe begins to pave new paths for you. And here we come directly to the law of patience and reward. While change is the engine that drives our lives forward, this law reminds us that true change and reward take time and patience. Spiritual work is not a sprint, but a marathon. The seeds you plant today take time to grow and bear fruit. And sometimes it takes longer than you would like. It's easy to fall into impatience when you're waiting for positive results. You're making progress, you're changing your behavior, you're focusing on the good, and yet nothing seems to change immediately. The law of patience and reward tells us that waiting for the reward is part of the process. It's like planting a tree. You give it water and sunlight, but you can't force it to grow faster. Everything has its own natural rhythm. Spiritual growth works the same way. It requires dedication, persistence, and the ability to stay centered despite delays on the outside. The rewards do come, but they don't always arrive immediately. However, those who remain patient and continue to do their spiritual work will eventually reap the fruits of their efforts, often in moments when you least expect it. This doesn't mean you should remain passive. Patience is not the same as inaction. It's about consistently continuing on the path, even if you can't yet see the results. It's about trusting that the universe recognizes your work and will give you the reward at the right moment. This patience is especially important when it comes to profound changes. Changes are not superficial, they reach deep into our inner beliefs and karmic heritage. It takes time to break old patterns, establish new habits, and train the mind to focus on the positive. And this is where the two laws interact. Without patience, you cannot fully integrate the necessary lessons that come with change. If you give up too quickly because you don't see immediate results, you miss out on the profound benefits that come only with patience and persistence. Change and growth happen in cycles, and these cycles take time. It's like waiting for a sunrise, you can't rush it, but if you're patient, you'll eventually see the morning sun rise. The interplay of the two laws shows us that patience is an indispensable prerequisite for real lasting change. Without patience, we cannot fully absorb the lessons that life is trying to teach us. But with patience, the change in your life will be deep and powerful, and the rewards you receive will enrich your life in a lasting way. So if you are seeking change in your life, remember this, the process requires not only courage but also patience. Every step you take toward your goals will bring you closer to the rewards you seek. But you cannot force the outcome. Give yourself and the universe the time it needs to fully manifest the changes. Because in the end, your patience will pay off, in the form of growth, fulfillment, and a life more in line with your true desires. As we delve deeper into the laws of karma, we come across two powerful principles, the law of meaning and inspiration and the law of harmony. Both laws remind us that our lives are not just random, but that every action and experience has a deeper meaning and inspires us to develop. Let's start with the law of meaning and inspiration. It shows us that nothing that happens to us is without purpose. Every experience, be it positive or challenging, has a message for us. It serves as a driver of our spiritual development and helps us fulfill our karmic duties. When we approach life with an awareness of this deeper meaning, we open the door to more intense spiritual growth. You may know the feeling of wondering why something specific is happening in your life. Sometimes it's hard to see the meaning behind painful or difficult experiences. Yet the law of purpose tells us that these moments are the greatest teachers. They challenge us to look deeper and understand what lesson life is trying to teach us. By recognizing the meaning of your actions and experiences, you will be inspired to make new choices and accelerate your spiritual development. Think about it, every day, every action, every encounter carries a deeper message. If you consciously engage with it, you will find that life is constantly teaching you to focus on the essentials and to continue on your spiritual path. This awareness drives you forward and inspires you to take the right steps to transform your karma. This is where we come full circle with the law of harmony. Harmony is the natural state of the universe, and it is the goal we should all follow. When we live in accordance with the laws of karma, we experience both inner and outer harmony. Everything in the universe strives for balance. However, when we work against this natural order, we experience unrest, imbalance, and karmic challenges. Imagine the universe as a vast symphony. Every action, thought, and word is a note in that symphony. When you live in harmony with the universal forces, you will feel how everything in your life comes together, your mind, your relationships, your goals. But if you live in disharmony, if you let yourself be guided by negative energies and thoughts, then the symphony is thrown out of balance, 
and you feel this in the form of inner unrest and external challenges. The connection between these two laws is obvious. When you recognize the deeper meaning of life, you will automatically strive for harmony. You will start making your decisions more consciously to live in tune with the cosmic forces. Harmony is the end goal, a state in which you are at peace not only with yourself, but also with the world around you. Imbalance, on the other hand, leads to karmic lessons that remind you to get back on the path of harmony. Having discussed meaning and harmony, two other important principles immerse us in the depth of the present moment and the constant change of life, the law of the here and now and the law of change. These laws remind us that life never stands still and that everything that matters happens in the present moment. The law of the here and now asks us to focus our attention on the only moment we can actually control, the now. All too often, we find ourselves caught up in thoughts of the past or worries about the future. Yet this dwelling on old experiences or fear of what might come blocks our spiritual progress. The past is a lesson, but change always happens in the here and now. You may have already realized that true transformation can only take place when you are fully present. When you focus on the past, you lose the opportunity to actively shape your future. When you flee into the future, you miss the moment when you can take action and make a change. This law reminds us that the present is the only window for change. Here in this moment, lies the power to transform our lives. This brings us directly to the law of change. Life is a constant flow, and nothing ever stays the same. Change is inevitable, and the more we resist it, the unhappier we become. The flow of life moves relentlessly forward, and our happiness and spiritual growth depend on how flexibly we deal with those changes. Flexibility is an important spiritual virtue. It allows us to accept the natural flow of life instead of fighting against it. When we welcome change instead of fearing it, we experience growth and renewal. It's like the seasons, each brings its own beauty and challenges, but altogether they are part of a natural cycle that sustains life in its fullness. The connection between the law of the here and now and the law of change is clear. Change always happens in the present moment. If you focus on the now and accept the changes that life brings, you will learn the necessary lessons and continue to grow. Those who recognize and accept the present moment will welcome change as part of life and not as something that threatens them. Now that we have gone through the 12 laws of karma, we can see the bigger picture. Karma is the invisible web that connects everything in the universe. It impacts us in every moment of our lives, shaping our experiences based on our choices, actions, and thoughts. It is important to understand this invisible web because it guides our destiny in subtle and often unexpected ways. The power of karma never sleeps. It is the silent companion that follows us on our path, reminding us that every action we take today has an effect on our future self. But this knowledge also gives us incredible power. When we integrate the 12 laws of karma into our lives, we take control of our destiny. We become conscious creators of our reality instead of passively suffering the consequences of unexamined choices. With each step we consciously take toward harmony and inner growth, we draw closer to a fulfilled spiritually enriching life. And that is the potential for true transformation. Every moment is a new opportunity to influence our karma. Every thought, every decision offers the chance to live more positively and consciously. As you become aware of these principles and put them into practice, you will notice how your life changes on all levels, from your relationships to your professional achievements to your inner peace. In the end, one central message remains, karma is the driving force of the universe. Every step towards consciousness, Every act of love and every moment of growth leads you to a more harmonious and fulfilled life.